that level. What is the woogie to the boogie? Ooh, it's the woogie to the boogie. Uh, today, I'm making up for last week. Because last week, I didn't have on any PlayStation gear for my PlayStation podcast. So today, I threw on a PlayStation hat. Let's see. Let's get a close up. Yeah, there we go. It's a little dark um, to see. And I got my PlayStation hoodie on. Because it's kind of cool. Um, the hoodie's cool, but I'm talking about the weather. It's not like the New York weather that I used to experience. No, 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 it's not that. It is definitely um, Florida weather, but it's November, so it's, you know, low 70s. We have some cool evenings. And um, most people in this house were sick. And um, with a little cold. It's a little cold, no COVID. Just a little cold. And I think um, I'm starting to get a tinge of it. It's a little Jacob. Jacob had, has had this little cough and runny nose. And of course, you know, he coughs all in your face and he wants to come sleep in the bed, you know, wakes up, some, wakes, wakes up in the morning crying, and wants to come Lay in the bed with me and stuff. And I'm like, oh, gosh, his mother went to work. I'm at home off today. That's Jacob. He does that. He's been doing that every every day that um his mother has worked and I've been at home. He'll come in and invade my room today. We didn't sleep, I let, but we laid in the bed. He watched. What did we watch? Incredibles 2 while I was studying for my test today. And then he started Toy Story 4. Don't be womp womping. Just because it's like 40 degrees right where you are right now. No, it's not that cold yet, is it? It didn't get that cold. It's not that cold in New York. It can't be. It's only November 8th. It's still a bit early. But yes. Thank you, everyone, and welcome to the Play Level Podcast. I am your host, Pablo Man 44 As we do... Oops. Oh, wait, wrong one. There we go. <laughs> oh, now I disappeared. There I go. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Oh, you know what it is? Sometimes my, um, I have to refresh my, refresh the connection with my touch portal with it. So let's see. I think it's refresh. Yes, this and each and every Monday or Tuesday. Sometimes it will be a Tuesday. You said it's up and down. Oh, the weather. Each and every Monday or Tuesday, we come here and we nerd out about a bunch of video game stuff. PlayStation centric. We love the PlayStation stuff, but we'll talk about other things. We talk about tech, any movie releases, TV show releases, all stuff based on, you know, stuff that's centered around gaming and stuff. So, like, we're not going to talk about, you know, like, um, what's the show that I think I might want to watch because only because it's, it's got Brandy, Eve and um notori norton and somebody else is in that show who the heck is the other one in that show there was somebody else um called queens um we're not gonna talk about shows like that we're gonna talk about stuff like the witcher season two coming you know what i'm saying next month we're gonna talk about stuff like that stranger things season four stuff like that stuff that you know has crossed over into the video game world or the video game world crossed over into it you know what I mean? Know what I mean? <laughs> Dave Chappelle quote. Know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> so yes, that's what we do here each and every Monday or Tuesday. Like I said, sometimes it happens on Tuesday. Well, it's happened once on Tuesday. So, um, yeah. And any sports, you know, any current sports stuff. I haven't watched any sports in the past couple of days. 
I've actually been, um, you know, yesterday I was studying, today I was studying because I had a test on, we had, we, we got a crash course on one of the subjects we were supposed to learn already that we didn't. So, um, yeah, I was, I was hitting the books hard. I was studying and I was editing my past two, um, podcasts and putting them on YouTube. They're finally on YouTube. All right. Episode 13 and 14 are finally on YouTube. So go check those out. Make sure you watch those like, share, comment, subscribe, do all those beautiful things. Help a brother out the dad level. You see the intro to the dad level videos at the bottom. When you click on a video and see that intro, you know, you're at the right place. And my, my youngest son loves that beat. As soon as it starts playing, he'll like stop whatever he's doing. He'll look for me and he'll start dancing. <laughs> so I'm happy about that. Hope you guys enjoy it. You know, I just, I'm just trying to be, you know, my own, you know, do my own thing. Not follow what everybody else is doing. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that tell me to, you know, stick to one thing or whatever. But I'm not a one thing kind of guy. I enjoy a lot of stuff. And I know there's a lot of people out there who enjoy a lot of stuff. And I want you to come enjoy a lot of stuff with me. Speaking of a lot of stuff. How are we feeling today? I feel a lot of stuff. Now, <laughs> here on the Play Level Podcast, we do talk about a lot of stuff. So that was what I really meant. Um, I was trying to find a segue. I you always try to you reach for segues. It's, it's all right. It happens. But um, you're tired. That's how you're feeling today. You're tired. You worked hard, or, or is that that um that I just ate something and I'm lazy, tired, tired. I got the itis, tired. Which tired is it? The itis. Yeah, I, I had some. I had some barbecue chicken and some um rice and black beans that I made yesterday. I quickly whipped up. Um, the. I bought this container. It's like a container with already seasoned rice. Last time they had the yellow rice. This time they didn't have it, but they had um, rice with black beans. So I got it. It's kind of. It's good and it's helpful, but I do think it's kind of salty. And there's no way to dumb it down without overcooking the rice. You know what I'm saying? I can't take out any of the salt like it's already embedded in it like so i mean it was decent like i i did find it to be kind of salty and um yeah and i think one of the um barbecue sauces i use is kind of salty too i didn't have a full bottle of the sweet baby rays i had um some craft i think it was craft i think it was a little salty i didn't i didn't add a lot of salt it could have been the mustard because I did use mustard. I, I just tried to quickly whip it together and cook it yesterday before, um, you know, before it's too late. I'm trying not to eat too, too, um, too late anymore. Yeah. Salty rice. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a little annoying. I mean, it's, 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 it's it was still good, but you know, I, it was just a little salty. It could just be because I've been drinking a lot of water. So. I'm feeling that salt a little more, but oh yeah, the Nets Bulls game is on right now. I should open up. I, I just have to keep it quiet. I have to mute it, which is annoying, but you know, I wish they would play on, on days I don't stream. I wish the Bulls would play on days I don't stream. <laughs> and that was it, you know. But of course, you know. That's not how this thing works. Oh my goodness. Just mute it. Oh, Zach, you should have pulled. No, oh, DeRozan going to pull. Oh. That should have been Lonzo in the corner. He would have switched that. 
like DeRozan could shoot, but he don't shoot enough um, to be as consistent as he could be. He's a mid-range kind of guy. Yeah, let me put this on the side here. Because we got some, some PlayStation stuff to talk about. You said, yep, and stay worried. You tell him, are you telling me to stay worried? I don't understand the context in which you speak, Neil. Because, you know, when the Bulls played the Celtics, I mean, we was getting blown out. And then, you know. Oh, your stream is behind mine? Oh, I just, well, oh, you probably got to, um, probably got to refresh. I won't, I won't say anymore. I'm just going to peek over to it every now and then. Like we was getting blown out by the Celtics and then we, we actually blew the Celtics out by the end of that game. So, you know, and you, you can't forget that the Bulls have a lot of young guys like our veteran right now. Our veterans are probably, um, you know, two of our starters in Vucevic and All right, I'm not going to say what's happening in the game <laughs> in DeRozan. Vucevic and DeRozan are like our, our veterans right now. And they're and they're not like, you know, that that old, you know, they're still fairly young. I mean, DeRozan been in the league for a while, but. You know what I mean? How did they let him get through there like that? But anyway. So, yeah. That's that's we we get through what we've been feeling today cuz that's that's how I'm feeling. I'm just feeling like I'm getting a little sick and hopefully it's nothing, you know, by the time I wake up tomorrow it's not worse or anything. So I can go to work and be fine. And have a good day at work tomorrow because I do work tomorrow in the morning. So I'm gonna put on some socks and some sweatpants or something and go to sleep night or some pajama pants and be nice and snug going to sleep so that I can be fine in the morning as best as I can. Yeah, I don't we have some medicine here in the house, but I don't really like taking medicine. I'll only take it if I need to take it to go to work, but I think I'll be all right. All right, let's move on. Moving forward, what have we been playing the past week? What games have you been playing this past week, Devon? I know I'm not going to talk to um, Mr. Cornelius because he doesn't play video games. He only has, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, what, what do you got? A... Uh, uh, a Commodore? What, what is you rocking over there? The Atari 2600? What? What you got? <laughs> He's got like a Nintendo 64. You've been playing both versions? Why? Because you play with people who don't have a PS5? Leave them behind, man. Just leave people in the dust, man. In Nintendo 64. Neo, man. Come on, man. You got to come to the... You know, it's 2020, man. What what year did that come out? That's ancient tech, man. You need to like those games look horrible right now. Like I got an emulator that upreses it, and it'll smash what you what you playing on the same console, two different games. But that's what I'm saying. You got to leave those people behind. Why are you playing the PS4 version when you got the PS5 version? You know what I'm saying? Just to play with the friends who don't have the PS5 version. Sometimes you just got to let some, some things go, you know? Tell them that, you know, they got to step it up. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what I played this past week is I finished... I don't know if the, if we talked about this the last time. Has this been since since then? I finished Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Yes, yes. That's I did that on Monday. No, I mean on Wednesday. Was it Wednesday or was it Friday? I think it was Friday. 
one of these days I streamed just just past I yeah it was Friday I think I um I finished Silent Hill Shattered Memories oh we pulled out Fallout 4 today nice but um I was trying to play Silent Hill 1 and after much research and frustration and trying a bunch of different ways I found out that playing a PS1 game on a PS2 will not capture on a capture card you have to finagle it a different way and um i bought a connector that should be here tomorrow hopefully it, it would be beautiful if it's here tomorrow then on wednesday i'm off and wednesday i stream again and i'll be playing silent hill one hopefully on wednesday i'll actually get to play it if i don't get to play it then i have to find something else to play i until i get the connector um because i don't want to jump and play silent hill 2 without playing silent hill 1 since i'm going down the list i finished silent hill origins on stream then i finished silent hill shattered memories on stream now i want to finish silent hill 1 on stream then 2 and then 3 and 4 and so on and so forth i got downpour and um homecoming i don't know which order there is but i'll figure it out by its release date i'm just gonna play them like that and then i'll be done with the silent hill stuff um in the meantime on my off days i'm going to be playing other stuff to catch up with my um backlog i'm finally platinum spider-man which is i'm super excited about super happy so i can go on to miles morales now which i'm going to start soon um i just didn't play a lot of video games outside of my stream because you know like i said i had a test to study for so i wanted to focus on that and um so yeah now that the test is over with and i can you know i'll play some stuff outside of the stream um i got that miles morales coming up there's some other stuff i want to play so i'm gonna try to um mix it up play a bunch of stuff and see what happens you know because i do want to catch up and i do want to play things when they get released and make videos at least if i don't live stream it make videos for youtube at least my youtube channel the dad level make sure you check it out like share subscribe comment do all those beautiful things get that algorithm rolling so other more a bunch of people can get there and get to watch it youtube will send it out to them saying hey this is great content check this out make sure you do that make sure you help a brother out anyway we're gonna get into the stories now let's get into some some gaming stories let's first of all um this all of a sudden does weird stuff now and i don't like it don't be adding stuff to my my stream screen i don't want that anyway first story we have on the ledger oh yeah oh yeah it fire, didn't it... fire 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 <laughs> fire 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 <laughs> more fire <laughs> it didn't have the animation that i put for some reason that animation just doesn't load all the time but it only it only would do it when you um Either when you drop bits, it'll it'll read out your um your message. It should, because I have it set for that. So hopefully it does that. I'm not sure. I have to check that again. But it should read out your message when you drop bits or when you subscribe or follow. Yeah, that's the, that's the un unfortunate only time it reads it out. No, I don't want to. Here we go. All righty, here we go. We are talking about the first story on the ledger. And I press the button and it won't make the noise because I need this up real quick. For Shigodol. Hackers. I, 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 this one caught my eye immediately. Hackers are one step closer to jailbreaking the PS5. Root keys discovered. I didn't read the story. I, we're going to, you know, live react to this because I want to know what the heck. 
Hacking group Fail Overflow appears to have overcome a major hurdle in the pursuit of jailbreaking the PS5. In a pair of tweets today, the group says that they've gotten all symmetric PS5 SICK root keys along with a screenshot for proof. They can all be obtained from software, including per console root key if you look hard enough. One tweet continues, this is a big step towards hackers being able to decrypt access to the PS5 firmware and begin efforts to run custom code and firmware, or in other words, jailbreak the PS5. This doesn't mean that the PS5 is entirely compromised just yet, but the root keys will allow them to explore the PS5's firmware for vulnerabilities. And that's a bunch of um, nerd jargon that I don't understand, but you know, to some that's, they're like, oh wow, look at that. And I'm like, um, bunch of, this is the Matrix um, intro. Uh, jailbroken consoles are often widely used to run pirated games, which obviously the console manufacturers don't exactly want to encourage. Many who jailbreak consoles claim altruistic or allegedly innocent purposes such as archiving gains and sideloading different operating systems like Linux. Regarding the newly exposed PS5 root keys, fail overflow was asked, can these be rotated easily? Insinuating that Sony might try to close the exploit now that it was known. To which they replied, no. At this point, it seems that it's only a matter of time before the PS5 is fully cracked. Fail Overflow is the same group that cracked the PS3 back in 2010. They also cracked the PS4 to run to run Linux and have been a part of the constant back and forth battle between hackers and Sony for more than a decade. VGC also noted that another separate incident this weekend allowed Andy Ningyan, a senior engineer at Google, to apparently gain access to debug settings on a retail PS5. Though he has no plans at this time to share the method, Ningyan also retweeted fail overflows discovery no plans for disclosure no eta the discovery comes just less than a year after the ps5 first launch but what it means for the future of the console at this point remains to be seen yeah you know you got people who are just not satisfied with you know things the way that they are things as is you know can't just be happy with, you know, the product that's been put out in the market. You know, they always have to, oh, you know, you want to be customized. And how about, you know, you just let it be what it is, you know? We're not, you know, trying to add a third leg to, um, you know, chickens. You know, we just want them to have two legs and two wings. That was a terrible... Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm watching the game. And I don't want to. I'm trying not to react. I'm sorry. I got to keep it to myself. I quote um, many people who, you know, who have been watching the Bulls play. The Bulls are fun to watch. This is a great game. Even though the, the Nets don't have, like, the best record, um, this is a, a great game. Um, this is a, a test to show how, you know, legit the Bulls are. And this is a team that just got put together. And like I said, a bunch of young guys out there. You know, the Nets got a whole heap of veterans. And not just like veteran role players. I mean, they got two pass MVPs. You know what I'm saying? Like they stacked. So this is this is good. But yeah. Come on, hackers, just leave things alone, man. I mean, you don't have the best intentions. Just, just stop lying out there. You wanna you wanna do you wanna do some some finagle and stuff. Like just just let it be what it be. I hope they hope they patch it out and block you out. <laughs> like 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 what they're doing with cheaters in um Call of Duty. I hope they do that to hackers. 
like hackers shouldn't exist man that's is, that's is not cool most hackers have um they, like like they have malicious intent and they're, they're trying to steal information and you know it ruins people's lives ruin people's livelihoods it does that it's, it's not good man like if you're just trying to put an a, a operating system on it so you can have a web browser on it all right that's one thing but we know a lot of hackers that's that's not what they're trying to do so please hackers please please stop you know be nice i mean there's some people that you know may theoretically deserve some things happening to them because they're terrible people and they do terrible things and they're selfish and they hurting other people and stuff um but most of the people who get hurt by these things are people you know normal people who you know do who aren't doing much wrong and who don't deserve it yeah go hack a washing machine you know what i'm saying go do that anyway <laughs> next story on the ledger psa you can preload gta trilogy on consoles now wow i saw that i was like i haven't pre-ordered it yet but i i guess so i mean i'm gonna wait i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put money in the pre-order right now but it doesn't come out till december 7th you know oh wait no it's november 11th oh snap so i need to go buy it right now <laughs> i kept looking at the um the the physical version no i don't want the physical version i'm getting the digital though i should get the no i don't want to get the physical version because that gets annoying sometimes having to swap out the disc that's that's you know i got the disc version so that i can play my ps4 games and stuff that i have the discs for you know what i'm saying and just in case they finally you know backwards compatible this console to play ps2 and ps1 games and stuff like that which would be very helpful because then I can just pop them into my PS5. They'll up res it and um, I can bypass that HDCP thing so that I can, you know, use my um, capture card to capture PS1 games easily. You know, you know, I can't I, I can't wait to play that. There's, there's a kid at my job who is complaining that they um that they didn't make it look like GTA 5. I'm like, uh, here we go again. I said, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> I said, um, it's a remaster, not a remake. And it looks a thousand times better than the original because all the textures have been updated and they all look good. It still has that same look and feel of the old game which brings that nostalgia piece back and it was i said dude it's three whole games what did you expect them to do they wouldn't have it wouldn't have come out this year if they had to remake three whole games we lucky we got them to remaster three whole games and it comes out in two three days from now but remake chill people man like come it looks good it's got the lighting effects it's got all that good stuff on it <clears throat> i'm sorry i keep getting sidetracked from the game um so like and the cars look better the trees look better the buildings look better all the lighting is better it's much better yeah so it looks it does look way better but you know you get some you know greedy people who want everything looking like it's look i want a new game to look like it's a new game i don't mind old games looking like old games with up res textures unless they tell me we're remaking this from the ground up you know to be a next gen game i'm not gonna expect it to look like one so you know and that's realistic yo <clears throat> so anyway people need to remind all right so let's 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 remind fools like him. i don't want to say fools all right he's a fool as a reminder here's a list of enhancements that you can expect 
updated player experience making it easier than ever to play these classic games including grand theft auto 5 style controller layout beautiful so they updated the controls improved gunplay and targeting controls with upgraded drive-by controls in, in grand theft auto san andreas they've improved the controls. i forgot about the drive-by stuff that's gonna be fun updated weapon and radio station selection wheels that they're making things like that look like gta 5 i'm telling you updated mini maps and enhanced navigation allowing players to set waypoints to destinations just like gta 5 there's there's your gta 5 stuff the ability to immediately restart a failed mission there you go plus new rockstar game social club accomplishments for members it got enhanced visuals with improved graphics and fidelity across all three games, including higher resolution textures from characters to weapons, vehicles to roads, and much more for greater detail. As you've seen in the trailers, greater detail. Improved water and weather effects. A com oh, I skipped one. A completely rebuilt lighting system with enhanced shadows, reflections, and more. Enhanced detail in trees and foliage. We saw that in the trailer. I don't know. Like, he probably didn't see a trailer. He probably just heard some people talking about it and follows the crowd. He's the type that follows the crowd because he listens to all the garbage music out that's out right now. And um, I keep trying to tell him. He keeps calling me an old head because I don't like none of the stuff he's talking about. But I keep telling him, like, you only like it because that's all they gave you. And, you know, you think because everybody else likes it because everybody else likes it because that's all they give you that you're supposed to like it well anyway it says increase draw distances to provide a new level of depth and definition there goes your gta 5 stuff plus platform specific features including 4k resolution support with up to 60 frames per second performance for playstation 5 and, and another console <laughs> Uh. All right, this smash smash smear smash. Nvidia DLSS support for PC. Touchscreen camera zooming pans and menu selections, as well as gyro aiming for the Nintendo Switch. Oh, it comes off of the Switch too. It just won't look as good as the other ones. It look more like the original. <laughs> Uh, I haven't seen um, switch screens. I'm sure it looks a little better. Um, I wouldn't say a lot better. I would say a little better. Um, yeah, that's the GTA trilogy. You can get it right now. Preload it on your console. You can't play it till the 11th, though. So. Next story. More GTA stuff. We talked about a possible rumor last week um, that Dr. Dre is working on new music for a GTA game, but it didn't say what game. So I started speculating and a lot of other people are speculating that it could be a new GTA game, which is GTA 6, which is what they're talking about here. Or it could be for, you know, the updated soundtrack for the GTA trilogy, because um, maybe they couldn't get the licenses for all the all the music from the games. Who knows? I hope it's uh, for the GTA 6 stuff. But here's some GTA 6 possible news. It's another rumor, but, you know, we're going to hold on to it. With that grain of salt that we hold on to it. Rumor, Grand Theft Auto 6 is the most chaotic Rockstar project to date. Development rebooted in 2020. So they're saying that they've been working on it. They just had to reboot in 2020. I don't know. <clears throat> let's let's keep reading. Then we'll, then I'll give you my thoughts. The release of Grand Theft Auto 6 is a long way off. We already knew that, but it seems like there might be more to the story than a studio than a studio taking its time. According to the latest rumor from Rockstar Magazine, as translated by Neil Gaff, the next gen. Um, the next Grand Theft Auto game is Rockstar's most chaotic project yet in terms of development. Things are reportedly being changed constantly and GTA 6 development was even restarted at one point. According to rumors, Grand Theft Auto 6 was originally due to be announced in 2020. Instead, it hasn't even been officially announced at all, even as we're reaching the end of 2021. Reportedly, the story and game elements 
have changed so many times since 2019 that the company has nothing concrete to show in a trailer or official announcement. The implication was the implication was that events over the past years meant the story has been changed. Something that led Rockstar Games co-founder and vice president of creative Dan Hauser taking an extended break from the company and eventually contributing to his departure. The report continues saying that when he left Rockstar back in March 2020, development on Grand Theft Auto 6 began all over again. The magazine described development on Grand Theft Auto 6 as Rockstar's most chaotic project yet, even worse than Red Dead Redemption or Grand Theft Auto 4. When questioned on this, the magazine didn't elaborate any further. You can see the full French interview in the videos below. Grand Theft Auto 6 is not due to be released until at least 2025, and even that's not concrete. According to another rumor, this is because Rockstar is trying to avoid crunch conditions that have given the studio a bad reputation already, including 100-hour weeks, mandatory overtime, and fear tactics. Reports of this and the dis disruptive development process all remain unconfirmed at this time, and Rockstar hasn't commented on the rumors. Other comments made by the magazine suggest there wouldn't be a remake of Grand Theft Auto 4, at least for the moment. It also suggests the release of Grand Theft Auto 5 for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series would be delayed again to April for, or May 2022. The new, new gen version of the 2013 title has already been delayed until March 2022 for unknown reasons. I mean, yeah, fear tactics. So what I gather from this story could be, you know, it could be a couple of things. I mean, this is uh, this is not from Rockstar. This is from a magazine. I, 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 I will quote Rockstar magazine. Right that they, they have to put out. I mean, this is what I was thinking as soon as I started reading this, that Rockstar has to get somebody in the press and what what's better than a Rockstar magazine? I don't know if the Rockstar magazine is exactly directly linked to Rockstar games. If it is, if it's not, either way, my theory still holds. People have been asking, like, what's the haps with the Grand Theft Auto 6 game? Why hasn't it been even, you know, into that? How come Rockstar hasn't said anything about it at all? You know, how come we're not getting anything about it? You know, and you see what year we're in now. Still nothing. I feel like they had to say something. They had to give something because they're not ready to show anything because, you know, they still are making money off of Grand Theft Auto 5. And now they're putting out the remastered trilogy. <coughs> oh, come on. So, um, and we've seen with recent, yeah, we know it's delayed. I mean, but we don't know it's delayed. Maybe it's on track and because that on track is taking a long time because they're, they're very ambitious and they're probably doing something real crazy that they have to say it's like delayed and maybe COVID pushed it back. Maybe COVID did delay it. You know, which is understandable, you know, but people got to relax. We know this company has been making this money off the same game for the past eight years. And they've made a lot of money off of it. It sold over 325 million, you know, units as, as a um, franchise. So let's, um, let's, let's just understand that there are some things that we don't know, no matter what they say. And just wait for the game. I mean, I think the the remastered trilogy will hold us off. Will hold us over until, you know, we get anything new. And, you know, them releasing uh them releasing a version of the um game of Grand Theft Auto 5 for the PS5. You know, that'll help. That'll definitely help, you know. And that that comes next year. So that'll hold us over, you know, because I'm pretty sure they're saying it's enhanced. It's probably going to look better, play better. It's going to be added stuff. So we'll be all right. 
you know, all I really play is um, online anyway, GTA Online. I don't play the story mode anymore. I I, I beat it back in the two, um, back in the PS3 days, and I only did on the PS4 enough to unlock the online part. So, you know, it's not like I'm you know itching for another campaign. I mean, I would love a campaign. Now, they do well with the campaign. It's probably going to be fun. It's going to be awesome or whatever. But I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with the next iteration of GTA Online. Because that's my favorite joint, you know. And that's where they're making their money from, really. Not off the campaign part. Maybe they're trying to figure that out. Like, how hard do we go with the campaign stuff? Because people play the online portion more than anything. So maybe that's their strategy. Maybe they're thinking about that. Figuring that out. Maybe that's what slowed them up. But we'll move on to the next story. We've 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 talked about that long enough. I like this one. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 temporarily removed from digital storefronts to renew licenses for archival footage. <clears throat> hmm. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of, uh, Sons of Liberty, and Metal, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater will be temporarily unavailable on digital storefronts due to, experience, due, due to expiring archival footage licenses. While the publisher looks into renewing the licenses, Konami, Konami will temporarily remove the two titles from the PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PS Now storefronts, as well as on Xbox 360, Nintendo 3DS, and other platforms. The change will go into effect starting November 8th, 2021, and there is currently no confirmed return date. According to Konami's official press release, the two games are temporarily temporarily removed due to the expiration of a license, specifically for the historical archival footage used in the two games. This temporary removal will apply globally and to all versions of the above two games, including HD editions and HD collections. If you already own any of the digital versions of either game, you will still be able to re-download it. But no new purchases will be allowed while they are delisted. Below is a list of all the versions. Oh my goodness. Below is a list of all versions of Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 3 that will be unavailable during this period. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. Re I can't react. I can't react. All right, I won't say nothing. Anyway, um. <laughs> Yeah, so we got the PlayStation 3, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty HD, Solid 3, Snake Eater HD, Metal Gear Solid HD Edition, um, and the Vita's, yeah, we got, we, we know that. The versions being removed are mostly for older consoles. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 haven't been released on PS4 or PS5 at this point, except via PS Now, though the older Xbox versions are playable on Xbox Series X. Both the PlayStation 3 PS Vita stores were originally supposed to close this summer. Sony reversed the decision. We know that. Now. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm like. That was a foul, yo. Like, straight up. That was a foul. That was a bad no call, yo. But my man Ayo Donsumu is out here balling. <laughs> Look at his fearless. <laughs> I like that kid, yo. Great pickup. So, um, yeah, man, they got him showing on arm, yo. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, um, so what I'm thinking, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start, um, you know, a little tingle in people's head, heads real quick. Uh, yeah, that's what you do. Um, I think, 
you know, there's rumors of a re- remake to Metal Gear game. It hasn't been confirmed which one it is. I mean, there's a rumor from a source that is reliable enough that says it's a Metal Gear Solid 3 rumor that's being remade. But we may, you know, this could be the beginning, you know, this is all timing thing. This is a whole timing thing. Look at the timing of this. I look at everything and yeah, sometimes I reach. It's okay. Because it's fun. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to speculate when you don't know what's going to happen next. It's fun to say, you know, maybe this will be like this. Maybe this is for this. I think maybe the timing of this is nothing of a coincidence. Maybe it's like, yeah, shut up. I do reach a lot. It's all right. (laughs) Maybe the timing of this is is like, yeah, so these licenses are going to be out of here. We got to renew it. So when we renew it, let's renew it with something new. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll hear more about, you know, what's actually happening with this rumored game, this rumored remake. You know, that would be awesome. Defense does win games. Just letting you know that. I'm just that's what I'm gonna say. You might be you might be near what I'm what I'm watching. We had I think it's at a timeout right now. Neil is upset. It's all right, Neil. It's all right. The game's not over, you know. I'm just saying the Bulls are fun to watch. I just I just I just yeah, we're at commercial. So we're I th- I think we're at the right spot now. I think you refreshed yours. So I think we're 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 together on this now. The Bulls are fun to watch, man. Like I said, we lost two straight games to Philly. Like we shouldn't have lost those games, you know, but they're still fun to watch, y'all. And you see the growing pains. You see the growing pains. You see where they got room for improvement because they're new together and they're a bunch of young guys. But we got some, we got a good core. We got a good solid core. So, you know, I expect us to lose, you know, some games and I expect us to win a lot. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the playoffs this year. There's no way the Bulls don't make the playoffs this year. There's no way. No way. There's no way we in a play in or nothing like that. We straight playoffs. I want to hear none of that. Fourth seed or something. Third seed. Second seed. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear none of that. Like eighth seed, seventh seed, shaky knife trying to play in. Nah. Nah, son. Anyway, moving on. Next story, action-adventure Samurai Slaughterhouse headed to next-gen PSVR. You're not going to be in a play and You're a Heat fan. He's not making going to be in no, no play and They're going to be in a play, the playoffs automatically. By, they're in the top three seeds. They're they running out of top three seed. I'm, I'm, that's, that's a, I guarantee that. They're not going any lower than the top three seed. Ab Games has announced that its action adventure title with the with the light RPG elements, Samurai Slaughterhouse is in development for the next generation PlayStation VR, PC VR, and Oculus Quest 2. What the heck is PC VR? Isn't Oculus Quest like no Oculus Quest is the the one that's um independent, right? So what are they talking about? Val- whatever. Built as a stylized VR exclusive with an open world samurai slaughterhouse will have you battling humans and mythical creatures. Check out a trailer below. We're not going to check it out today. It says, thanks, TSA. I guess we can't check out the trailer anyway. I don't know. I'm not I'm not I'm not clicking it. Um, Yeah, so. Check how they're talking about games being developed for PSVR 2. So, you know, I'm just, it's its imminent. It's imminent. At least them, you know, announcing it and showing, you know, I mean, they've announced it. They already showed, you know, some, some pictures of, you know, 
what they've been working on with as far as how it looks or whatever. Yeah. Iron Road Trip is gonna be gonna be kind of crazy. But you know, we can hang, y'all. I don't care. I don't care who we gotta play. Look at this kid right here. Kick it to Ayo. Kick it to Ayo. Oh, that should have been N1. <laughs> we can hang, so you know, bring it on, baby. <laughs> bring it on. Shot town. Shout out to all my people who come across my stream or my my um youtube channel and watch my videos from chicago i'm a bulls fan man i come from new york man but i've been a bulls fan since i was five years old man i love the bulls first game i watched was on a tiny little tv it was about about this big about the size of the tv i got right here it was a bulls and knicks game and i was just getting into basketball because my dad um he was watching the game and i wanted to watch it and i had sat there and I watched it and the red team won the red team was the Bulls so Bulls fan I think they were playing the Knicks I figure I mean it's been I mean I was five y'all I'm pretty sure that's the only reason the game was on the TV in the house was that it was a Knicks game because you know not like you know, we had an NBA League Pass or anything like that. So, so I've always assumed it had to have been the Knicks game. You know, I just remember it being the Bulls and I picked them and then I started following them. I straight up started following their games, started watching it. We was losing to the bad boy Pistons. I hated them. I hated the Pistons because they kept beating us. I used to get yelled at for yelling at the TV. See, I'm making all that noise. <laughs> so, yeah. Now I can make all the noise I want when I watch a game. Especially when I'm in here. Because it doesn't matter! This is my domain! Are you not entertained? Is this not why you're here? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Bo's got a nice little, little comfy cushion right now. Sorry, Neil. He said Batman about to show up. Nah, he got school tomorrow. He better be in his bed. He better not show up to the stream tonight. Not at this point of the stream. I can see maybe in the beginning of the stream. It's still a little early. But yeah, I like how they're talking about PSVR 2. That makes me happy. <clears throat> and speaking of PSVR 2, new Sony patent details real-time image upscaling for PS5 and PS5 VR games. <clears throat> hmm. Real-time image upscaling? A new patent from Sony Interactive Entertainment suggests that the company is working on machine learning for image upscaling on the PS5 and future PS5 VR games. Filed back in April and recently published at the end of October, the patent titled Computer Implemented Method for Completing an Image outlines ways that machine learning can essentially create masks of any given image to reveal some sections and hide others, altering what it needs to and using those processes to fill in holes created by regions of missing or corrupted data. Machine learning eventually makes this process less resource intensive on the hardware, allowing for higher resolution image upscaling without the performance or time costs normally associated with such processes. <clears throat> I know this isn't making sense to a lot of people, but bear with me. Throughout the patent, virtual reality is explicitly mentioned on multiple occasions, specifically talking about the higher computing power required by a headset to display a satisfactory image than a traditional computer monitor. This is because VR headsets keep two separate screens close to the user's eye, close to the user's eyes, are presenting wider angles and need to operate at higher sustained frame rates, which eat up processing power normally used to display higher resolution images. The machine learning process outlined in the patent would require much less, com much less computer power without sacrificing image quality where it is needed most for maintaining user comfort and immersion. He did try to hook it on. <laughs> 
One of the primary downside to the last gen PSVR headset was the lower resolution of the games played in the headset. And while many developers worked wonders with it in terms of graphics and visuals, as they did, it still had notably less notably less fidelity than a standard 2D screen game. Excuse me. Yes, I mean, I expected that because it's VR. But some games looked really good. Like, I know um, Resident Evil 7 looked much better playing it outside of VR than it did in VR, but it still looked really good. You know, Blood and Truth looked really good. This pattern could indicate a focus on bringing the next gen PS5 VR headset up to par without sacrificing the processing power necessary to run VR games comfortably. Additionally, the patent tech the patent tech could easily apply to 2D screen PS5 games as well, letting the PS5 upscale the resolution of games in real time without sacrificing their performance either. Games Radar noted, <clears throat> I mean, notes that the language of the patent suggests it is similar to NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling tech used to improve image resolution in NVIDIA graphics cards on PCs in real time. This would bring a similar solution to the PlayStation console. While the patent itself doesn't call out a specific console or platform, aside from mentioning VR, it's obviously published by Sony Interactive Entertainment, and it's unlikely they'd be working on this tech for PCs or other platforms. GamesRadar also discovered the LinkedIn profile of Sony senior principal engineer Andy Bigos, who is listed as the author of the patent, which lists Bigos as working on the application of machine learning and neural rendering on real-time graphics on the PlayStation 5. Seems like it's a pretty sure thing that this patent applies to the PS5 and the upcoming PS5 VR headset. As PC VR tech has grown in major ways since the release of the last gen PS VR headset in 2016, Sony's own VR solution has felt increasingly left behind, especially with the launch of the PS5. However, this image upscaling tech could really get Sony back in the game when it comes to quality console virtual reality. Now we just have to wait to see it come to fruition, which I'm telling you is not far gone, not far off. Look, we are, we already have pictures of the controllers. You know what I'm saying? This right here, this is pictures of the controllers. This is where they're going with the controllers right here. Right? We just haven't seen the headset, but we got pictures of the controllers. Now, these are early versions, so it may look a little different by the time it comes out, but this is, this is where we're going. And this looks good. And, and this has probably has a lot of sensors and stuff like the tech behind this is probably remarkable because look at the, the dual sense controller and it's going to have haptics oh the hornets and the lakers tonight <clears throat> all i'm saying about the nba yeah r.i.p l.a um, they're already talking about they need to trade Westbrook. <laughs> I try to tell them by the by midseason. Look like it might be sooner than that. I try to tell them by midseason, y'all. It was gonna be um speculation, rumors of getting rid of somebody, and then if that somebody would be Russell Westbrook. Cause him and him and LeBron can't play together. Cause they're the same thing. Like they need the ball in their hand to facilitate too much, and Russell Westbrook has you know. He's an alpha alpha. So you can't have another alpha there. You know? He's trash when he try to play with other people. You know what I'm saying? When he's the man, he's the man. Like that's why he won the MVP and like had like the average of triple double. Splat, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Bulls fan, guys. The Bulls is busting the nets right now. Ooh, get it off. <laughs> Defense wins games and wins championships. All I'm saying is do two more games. Oh, that kid is fearless, yo. That was a heat check. That's a rookie. Yeah, you know KD was going to make that shot. That kid is like the best player in the league right now. <laughs> you knew KD was going to hit that. 
He said that was a fluke. Harden averaged 48 yet. Nah, I don't care. With nine rebounds. No, he didn't have nine rebounds, nine assists. He didn't have no 49-9. All right, he wasn't close to averaging a triple-double like that. All right, he had maybe an eight. Maybe a nine-eight. Westbrook averaged a triple-double straight up. You can't say this person is not the MVP and he averaged a triple-double. There's just no way. And he was on, like, the Thunder... What would they what would they have like yeah, but Harden wasn't by itself. Who did the Thunder have? When he won that MVP. Whatever. We're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Neither one of them is my team, so who cares? Next story. <clears throat> Sony officially confirms investment in Devolver Digital as the company goes public. So um, I, already, I already heard about this, so I don't have to read this story. I can, I can just tell you. Devolver Digital um, went public and, you know, they, they basically when you go public, you, um, you sell stocks to investors. Like you, you open up to, for investors to invest into your company, whatever. And this is a way... To help you um, fund your company and be financially good for your company. And, you know, they make good games at Devolver Digital. They're sort of indie, they make, but they make good games. And they went public and PlayStation, I think, 15%. I got to see how much they bought into the company. Um, company soon. Yeah, they don't worry about financial. They've made... Um, I'm trying to see. Where is it? It's not in this story, but it 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 said in another story I read. It said how much they invested in. Um, <laughs> the Bulls are rocking them now. <laughs> the Bulls is rocking them now. Let's go, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, this ain't no fluke. <laughs> Sorry, Cornelius. But yeah, it, the other story said how much they invested in, but they invested a, a good amount. It's either five or fifteen percent. It was something like that. I mean, it was, it was something weird. Like it was something that um you know made them have a nice stake in the company, um, which means that they're supporting indie developers and um, Devolver Digital. I've seen that on a bunch of stuff. And they, they make pretty, you know, they make fun looking games and stuff. So that's awesome. So I just want to talk about that because they they just mentioned like a while back, you know, there was a lot of things going on about how PlayStation doesn't um, support indies anymore. And Xbox is the only ones really supporting indies because PlayStation once had a major focus on indies. And then because the success of their first party titles, I think they put it in the back burner of how they were expressing their interest and their support of indie games and indie um, developers. So Xbox was like, oh, we can capitalize on that. And they went and because they don't make good games. So they had to rely on indie games or whatever. Other people making games. So, <laughs> so, so that's what happened. And it was like, oh, PlayStation doesn't care about indies or whatever. Now... Oh, that was a bad play. <clears throat> Who was that? That was green, wasn't it? Yeah, that was green. Yeah. <laughs> he made up for it. So anyway, yeah, so um, PlayStation has been showing um, more support for indies as of late. So that's that's a good thing. Good thing. Good thing. Good thing. So let's hop on over to the next story. <laughs> Marvel's Avengers finally getting PlayStation exclusive Spider-Man hero event later this month. Ooh, later this month? Oh, we've known for more than a year that Spider-Man would eventually be coming to Marvel's Avengers exclusively 
for PlayStation players. And now the Web Slinger finally has a release date. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me, sorry. That was rude. Starting November 30th, PlayStation owners and players and lovers and fans and the people who love really, you know, playing video games on consoles and not playing crap and stuff. Um, PlayStation players can take part in the Spider-Man with Great Power Hero event, which will let you experience Spider-Man's story through unlockable challenges woven throughout the Avengers initiative. I had to hit that for them. Because you know that they tried that they tried a pun right there. It said you can experience Spider-Man's story through unlockable challenges woven throughout the Avengers Initiative. We did we are icing them right now. There's no coming back now. Game ball game. Just call the game over. Let's put a put another one in the win column for the Bulls and another one in the L column for the for the Nets. We up 20, like there's a minute and 45 left. We are not collapsing. They are too hype. You're in Chicago. It's not happening. Anyway. <clears throat> so here's how Crystal Dynamics describes Peter Parker's story in the upcoming event. <laughs> Peter Parker undercover, uh, uncovers AIM's new plan to acquire technology that could make their synthoid armies unstoppable and total domination inevitable. He must partner with the Avengers to stop this looming threat and forms a tentative friendship with Miss Marvel and Black Widow while keeping his identity hidden. As a hero accustomed to working solo, he struggles with the new dynamics of working with a team. Will he join up full time with the Avengers or stay independent in his fight against AIM? At this point, there aren't any additional details or whatever, um, but we'll keep we'll, we'll keep an eye on the story. So there's a, there's a lot to the story. You guys can read the story in, in your own. Um, they're, they're saying there's all this stuff. There's a claw raid, and you know a bunch of stuff happening with it. But you know, I just want to talk about the Spider-Man stuff, and I'm wondering how he's gonna look. Is it gonna be the Spider-Man from the Spider-Man game, the PS5 Spider-Man game, or is it gonna be? another new look of a spider-man because that would be three in the past couple of years in the past few years so it'd be three different spider-man looks because they changed his look for the remastered version <clears throat> yo look at the sumo y'all <laughs> yo this is my dude right there yo <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> my dude right there <laughs> that's a rookie you want on your team man he's he's not caring about nothing but being out there and doing everything to win yeah <laughs> Yo. give it to io just give it to io let him let him let him hit a three real quick <laughs> oh man oh that's it we can run out the clock 118 to 95. Chicago Bulls win. There's your sports news, ladies and gentlemen. We have sports news. This just in. The Chicago Bulls defeat the Brooklyn Nets 118 to 95 in Chicago to go 7 and 3 while the Nets fall to 7 and 4. DeRozan with 28, Levine with 24, Dunsumu with 15, Green with 11, and Vucevic with 11. All right, on the Nets, KD, of course, MVP caliber player. 38 points. I didn't get to see the rest because, but it doesn't matter because the Bulls won and I gave you the Bulls stats. Oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on to the next story. Elden Ring will support ray tracing on next gen consoles. Five playable classes revealed. I didn't know um, Elden Ring was coming for, um, the PS4 and stuff like that. But following a GameStop 
leak over the weekend, Bandai Namco Entertainment and From Software have officially confirmed that Elden Ring will support 4K and 60 frames per second alongside ray tracing on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. A breakdown is as follows. The PS4 is maximum resolution up to 1920 by 1080 p frame rate up to 30 frames per second. HDR supported. PS4 Pro. Maximum resolution, maximum resolution up to 3200 by 1800 p Frame rate up to 30 frames per second. HDR supported. PS5 maximum resolution of 3840 by 2160 p. Frame rate up to 60 frames per second. HDR supported. Ray tracing via patch supported. <clears throat> While the PS5 and Series X specs are identical, only Xbox consoles will get full cross-generation compatibility, and that Elden Ring save data can be ported between both generations. On PlayStation platforms, you can transfer your data from the PS4 to PS5 should you start Elden Ring last gen, but it won't work the other way around. In simple words, once you start the game on the PS5 and decide to play it on the PS4, your saves won't transfer. Additionally, once you port your PS4 save over to PS5 and continue playing, you can't take your project progress back to the PS4. It's all a one-way street, which makes sense. He do got that joke in no energy. But okay, so I can close out this um Bulls one. But who like I mean Xbox is like speaking of reaching, Xbox is really reaching, trying to oh, but you know, with our version, if you're playing on the Xbox Series X and you wanna go back to playing on your Xbox One X for whatever reason that might be, it doesn't make any sense, but but if you want to do it, you can do it. Who wants to start who who owns the current gen consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Smeary Schmacks Smash Smeary Schmess Smash and Schmacks who wants who owns these new gen current gen now gen consoles and will buy a game for these consoles and still buy it for the last gen consoles and start playing it on the new gen consoles and then say, you know what? I, I'm tired of playing it on my PS5. I'm gonna go play it on my PS4. Who's gonna do that? Why would anybody do that? That doesn't even make any sense. That's the dumbest thing. You know what, Xbox? Yeah. You guys, do, you, you guys just say, say and do some stupid stuff. You're just trying to be better than PlayStation. You can't. You never have and you never will. Check the numbers. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Boogie, boogie. Next story. Nobody got time for this nonsense. Here in some animated series news, Devil May Cry, the animated series, will have multiple seasons and will star Dante and Virgil. Producer Adi Shankar revealed in a recent interview with IGN that the 2018 announced Devil May Cry the animated series will have multiple seasons and the first season will feature eight episodes. That's four more episodes than that anime for Resident Evil did. Come on, we need more episodes. Do it now. I haven't checked in a while, but I doubt you guys updated it because I would have seen a story about it. Somebody would have said something about it, but I'm gonna check again. But I was dumb mad that I only had four episodes because it was really good. All right. Okay. The anime series will multiple seasons, and the first season will feature eight episodes. Additionally, the series will star beloved characters Dante and Virgil. Shankar said that scripts for season one are complete, and he's eyeing a multi multi season arc. He also joked that Chris Pratt won't be voicing any actors, <laughs> any characters, exactly, because Chris Pratt is voicing every <laughs> everything right now. Leave him alone, man. He's, he's really good at what he does, y'all. Don't be mad. The entire team, both from the management side and the creative side, have been so incredibly supportive and gracious, Shankar said. Hiroki Kobayashi-san has been wonderful. It's seriously a joy to work with Capcom. The character library is unlike anything assembled. Speaking of adapting video games into television series, Shankar, who is behind Netflix Castlevania as well, said... Just like there's no one-size-fits-all approach to adapting a book to a movie, and just as there is not one right way to make a cover song, 
There is no one size fits all approach to adapting, translating, or expanding games into another medium. Castlevania had a team of people top to bottom who were fans of the IP and wanted animation to be taken seriously as a medium and not just the genre. In 2017, when we launched Season 1, it felt like a fight to be noticed or even acknowledged by mainstream. The fact that Castlevania has generated not only a spin-off, but has essentially sparked an entire vertical of adult-oriented animated content for Netflix is insane. This is a case of right place, right time, and I'm honored that I got to be a part of this ride. I guess I need to check that out. <clears throat> I guess I need to check that out. Castlevania. But yeah, we got some um, Devil May Cry um, anim animated series coming. It doesn't say when, but you know, look out for it. Ubisoft employee group says none of its demands for better working conditions have been met. What's going on at Ubisoft? Ubisoft's management probably breathed a sigh, a sign of relief when Activision Blizzard stole the crown for fostering one of the most toxic work environments in the video games industry. But a group of employees has issued a fresh letter reiterating simple demands that Ubisoft has failed to meet thus far. To his credit, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo, Guillermo seems to have a better PR department than Activision Blizzard's Bobby Kotick in that he gave an excellent impression of wanting to make changes by... <clears throat> excuse me. Changes by immediately launching third-party investigations and pending numerous mea culpas, whereas Kodak spent a week denying the allegations. <laughs> Ubisoft also didn't have a lawsuit to face, so found itself in a better position to sweep things under the rug. But now, where a lot of revered Blizzard figureheads ended up getting the boot, Ubisoft let go of a few employees and then move Guillermo's close group of friends around to different positions despite numerous complaints. Fortunately, the employee group hasn't given up. Its four key demands are outlined below. Stop promoting and moving known offenders from studio to studio, team to team with no repercussions. This cycle needs to end. We want a collective seat at the table to have meaningful say in how Ubisoft as a company moves forward from here cross-industry collaboration to agree on a set of ground rules and processes that all studios can use to handle these offenses in the future. This collaboration must heavily involve employees in non-management positions and union, union representatives. It remains to be seen how Guillermo will respond to the demands in his next call with investors. <clears throat> man, it, it is crazy, man. Like, But, you know, if you look at it, I mean, these are these are companies. These are companies that make you know decent games or whatever, but that you know. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> they're not. They're not. You know. You you notice there's something missing from all of this. You know, something that you don't see in any of this. <clears throat> Doesn't say anything about a PlayStation Studio. Nope. Nope, no toxic working conditions over there. Because if there was, it'd be talked about. We know that. So kudos, thumbs up to PlayStation. Keep it going, man. Keep the great work environments. Keep the people happy. And that's why they're pumping out these top-notch AAA games. Killing them out there. Let's move forward. Now, here's one that got some controversy. This one is it was being talked about a lot. And um, when it came across today, I was like, yeah, definitely got to talk about this one. Skyrim Anniversary Edition. This one you might. Um, let's see, I want to know your opinion on this, Vaughn. Because, you know, you've bought this game a couple of times, haven't you? <clears throat> you've invested in this game more than once. Skyrim Anniversary Edition costs $49.99. The upgrade costs $19.99 for special edition owners. I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. Bethesda, currently owned by Microsoft, has announced that Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition will cost $49.99 and whatever those are respectively at launch. <laughs> those who already own Skyrim Special Edition will be able to upgrade to the anniversary edition for 19 bucks. 19.99, 20 bucks. 
As a reminder, the Anniversary Edition comes with the base game, Skyrim Special Edition add-ons, over 500 unique pieces of Creation Club content, and more. A handy list can be found below. 19 bucks if you own the special if you if you own the special edition already. Do you own the special edition already? Skyrim special edition? <clears throat> so you'll have to spend 20 bucks to get the anniversary edition if you want all that extra stuff. So the list can be found below Creation Club. The anniversary edition and upgrade includes over 500 unique pieces of content from Creation Club, including quests, dungeons, bosses, weapons, spells, and more. With creations, there is a lot more to discover. Dragonborn. With this official add-on for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, journey off the coast to Morrowind to the island of Solstheim, encounter new towns, dungeons, and quests as you traverse the ash wastes and glacial valleys of this new land. Become more powerful with shouts that bend the will of your enemies and even tame dragons. Your fate and the fate of Solstheim hangs in the balance as you face off against your deadliest adversary, the first dragonborn. <clears throat> Dawnguard. The vampire lord Harkon has returned to power. By using the Elder Scrolls, he seeks to do the unthinkable to end the sun itself. Will you join the ancient order of the Dawnguard to stop him, or will you become a vampire lord? And Dawnguard, the ultimate choice will be yours. Hearthfire. With this official add-on to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you can purchase land and build your own home from the ground up. From a simple one-room cottage to a sprawling compound complete with an armory, alchemy laboratory, stable, garden, and more. Use all new tools like the drafting table and carpenter's workbench to transform quarried stone, clay, and sawn logs into structures and furnishings. Even transform your house into a home by adopting children. Wow, they're going with some, um, the Sims elements, some Minecraft elements and some Sims elements there. And they're going all in for that. Um, a lot of people were upset that it costs anything. <clears throat> people are really upset, um, about it being $49.99, but it's a, it's a special, special edition, the anniversary edition. So I, I get that it's a high price, but some people are saying, why isn't it? an upgrade a free upgrade for the anniversary edition well what happens is um somebody was saying that it's a free upgrade to the special edition if you already own the the, the regular game i don't know how true that is because it doesn't say it here but some people were trying to justify you know what was going on here some people were very mad that it's 20 bucks of course, it's all about money, and that's why. So I don't know. I have to do some more deep digging. But forty nine ninety nine, and then nineteen ninety nine. I could see maybe twenty nine ninety nine, and then nineteen ninety or nine ninety nine. It should have been nine ninety nine for the um to upgrade from the special edition to the anniversary edition. Nine ninety nine, and then twenty nine ninety nine for the anniversary edition. You know, it's an old game. Twenty nine ninety nine is a good price. It's thirty bucks. I would have went. I, I I would say you know even thirty nine ninety nine wouldn't be too bad. But for fifty bucks, it's an old game. I know you're giving a lot, but it's still an old game. You know what I'm saying? They selling GTA five for twenty four ninety nine. That's 2013. And you get all that comes with GTA Online. You may have to, you know, grind and pay a little extra here and there to get, um, you know, like certain vehicles so that you can do certain um, heists and stuff. But, <clears throat> you know, most of the missions are just, you know, you can just go and do them. You feel me? And you can still play those missions with somebody else who has all that stuff already and you don't have to have it. You can partake in the mission still and make money from it. If you got friends who got it already. You can't do that with, you know, Skyrim. If you don't pay for Mar Morrowind or whatever, you, you don't get to go there. 
you know? <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd talk about that real quick. Next story. You know, I'm excited about this. Lionsgate is going to make games based on the Saw franchise. There was already a Saw game and I have it. I have the Saw game. It's somewhere down there. PS3 it came out for, I believe. I never played it. I bought it because I bought every Saw movie, so I had to. And now I have the Saw um, on Blu-ray. The complete series. Um, and I want to watch it. And I still need to see um, Spiral. I still need to see that. But, yeah, they made a Saw game. And, um, actually, I did play Saw. Actually, never mind. I did, I did actually play the Saw game, and it was pretty good. I liked it. Wasn't the best game, but it was pretty good. I forgot. I, I forgot. I did actually play the Saw game. I did finally crack it open and play it. Um. So yeah, but you know they're gonna make you know new games. So we're we're looking at. Um. Hopefully it's not games like how Dead by Daylight and stuff is. Hopefully it's some more like horror like. You got escape room kind of things, you know, like it's supposed to be. Two prominent Lionsgate producers have revealed that the company is looking to create games based on the popular horror series Saw. Speaking of Lionsgate, side note, my hometown Yonkers is getting a Lionsgate Studios down in 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 the downtown portion of Yonkers, so that's exciting by the by the riverfront. I remember they was um, first starting to build the area and building for that um, when I was living there. And now they, um, you know, are more forthcoming with that information. Like we, we knew some people, so we heard about some things before things were even supposed to be, you know, put out there. So we learned about that. But now that I saw something that is more official now, and they're talking about it more in an official capacity. So shout out to Yonkers with Lionsgate. Shout out to Lionsgate. That's pretty awesome. And that's funny that they're talking about this here. Because, you know, who, who knows? They could be working on video game stuff in the Yonkers branch of the Lionsgate. <clears throat> that could be the reason why it's there. Anyway, um, based on the popular horror series, so answering questions from fans on Reddit, the producer stated that Lionsgate had, has brought them some amazing projects. While details are still scarce, there's sure fans that the project will 100% happen, which is awesome because I, I really would love to see that. I will definitely go with, and it's one of my favorite movie series, the Saw series. So I would definitely stream that. No question. It just better be good. Good or bad, I'm playing it. Saw film, because I'll figure it out myself. Saw film series producers Mark Berg and Oren Cools, that's how you pronounce the name, recently held an Ask Me Anything, which I have right now. You can ask me anything. It is part of the tags of my stream right now, AMA. So you can't ask me anything randomly in the stream. If you like, I don't have to answer, but you can ask me. <laughs> On the horror subreddit. In it, the duo answered a few questions from fans about the future of the franchise. One such question was about the possibility of a Saw game series specifically for next-gen consoles. Replying from the official Lionsgate Reddit account, the producers revealed that Lionsgate gave them several projects that they were currently exploring. Nice. This isn't the first time the popular horror series made it into a video game. You see, I talked about this. I have that. Saw the video game back in 2009 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. Developer Zombie Studios even made a sequel, Saw 2 Flesh and Blood, which received notably unfavorable reviews. I don't think I have that one. I have to check. I don't think I bought Saw 2. Let's see if I can see it from here. Let me just give me one second to look real quick. Nope, I only saw the first one. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Oh, you should have saw that one coming. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Bet you never saw the day when someone would make that many saw jokes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I wish I could have saw your face when I told that joke. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. All right, you know. 
you know, I, I kind of, you know, went back and I looked at what I was just doing and I saw that it was a bit much. <laughs> I knew there was one more. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Notably, the film studio is also produce, producing the Borderlands film adaptation. Lionsgate has released various updates about Borderlands in recent months. Big name actors such as Thor Ragnarok's Kate Blanchett, comedian Kevin Hart, and Halloween's Jamie Lee Curtis are confirmed as part of the star studded cast. While Saw, any Saw game is likely a ways out, rest assured that it will 100% happen at some point, bringing the storied and gruesome trap based horror franchise to consoles once again. Yeah, yeah, so I knew when I saw that I had to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on <laughs> to the next story. Sega says Sonic Movie's success was partly driven by the company taking design criticism seriously. I guess they saw their flaws and fixed it. <laughs> oh, wait, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. The infamous Sonic the Hedgehog movie character design fiasco of 2019 seems to have ended up working out in Sega's favor. At least that's what the company told investors in a recent financial report, in which it noted that listening to fan feedback and redesigning the characters, however costly that may have been, improved fan satisfaction, which then led to a positive public view, ultimately driving the movie to success. Not to mention that my man, Jim Carrey, delivered the most perfect Dr. Robotnik that you, <clears throat> that you could possibly get. No, they couldn't have cast it any better than that. No way they could have. No way. They say, you know, they talk about the secret success, strength of the Sonic fan community. They improved the character designs because people was talking about it. Yeah, they they believe that it helped. I mean, it, I'm pretty sure it did. I'm pretty sure that when fans were like, oh, God, that Sonic looks crazy, looks disgusting. What is that looks weird? Oh, get it out of here. This movie is going to suck. And they go and they fix it, make them look like Sonic Sonic. People were like, oh, wow. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, they, they heard and listened. They went they fixed the character in the whole movie. Some people were like, oh, man, they're desperate. And some people, most people were like, oh, man, finally, you know, we give feedback and somebody listens. And the movie was good. Like, I enjoyed it. I really liked the movie. And like I said, Jim Carrey crushed it. So. Yeah, so I to all companies out there, whether you make movies, cartoons, video games or whatever. Listen to the people who watch and play, who absorb and um, pay for your content, you know, the consumers of it and those who are fans of it. Listen to us when we tell you what we don't like, what we want, what we need, what you should do better. Not everything you have to do, because I know sometimes we have unreasonable requests, but sometimes it's like very necessary that you do these things and it makes us feel better about you as a company that we can tell you something you take it into consideration you do something about it even if it's not exactly what we envisioned but the fact that you listen to us in some capacity that helps a whole lot so take notes there <clears throat> as we move forward we got two more stories guys Battlefield 2042 trophy list rewards those who play as a team and go for the objective. This one is for me right here because I'm not one of those guys who's out there trying to, you know, get my um, KTD up because, you know, I like to go in slow like you're really supposed to when you're in these real life situations these people who go in there all willy-nilly going there running around gunning everybody down running around with sticks and killing people with sticks or knives because they think it's funny because they're running and you know the um the the what is it the reaction time 
is um in your favor because you're running around and you're sliding and you're knifing people and it's and it's a quick knife kill you can shoot somebody 17 times and they don't die but you know one knife slice and somebody's dead you know in these games so i'm not one of those guys but i like playing as a team we have objectives we go for the objective and um you know we get it done that's what i like and, I, and i'm glad to see that the trophy list will reward a brother like me who does stuff like that hopefully that's they're doing what they say they're going to do so there are 35 trophies and they include including the platinum trophy putting it on the shorter side of most trophy lists which is good <clears throat> Those wanting to earn that platinum will need to be able to play as a team as there are several trophies for squad actions. There's also a need to go for the objective in those rounds instead of concentrating on kills and conquest mode. That doesn't mean kills aren't important though. You need an all arounder with you you'll need to be an all arounder with vehicles, melee weapons and concentrate on headshots with ranged weapons. Finally, you need to try out most of the specialists too. You can see the full Battlefield 2042 trophy list below. I like that. I'm not going to platinum this. This is not going to be one of those games I platinum. Successfully extract in hazard zone without anyone in the squad having died. Perform 20 melee kills in one round. <laughs> Close quarters combat specialist. Yeah. So all I know is I like that they have um squad based trophies and that, you know, team playing for the team, going for the objective. That's what I like. Moving on to our last story of the day. <clears throat> how Grand Theft Auto's how Grand Theft Auto 3's open world influenced Ratchet and Clank and Resident Evil 7. This was very interesting to me, so I had to talk about it. I'm not going to make another Saw joke. I almost did, but I, I was, oh man, I was, I was gonna, but I'm not. All right. I'm not. I'm going to be good. Celebrating the 20th anniversary of the release of Grand Theft Auto 3, several prominent game developers and studio heads reflected on the sandbox crime simulators influence on the games industry as a whole. Insomniac Games head of creative strategy Brian Hastings revealed that the open world mechanics of GTA 3 influenced the gadgets and exploration of the Ratchet and Clank series. Capcom director Kashi Nakanishi also notes that Resident Evil 7 may have been born at least in part thanks to GTA 3. GTA 3 was the first game where you really made your own fun, Hastings states. Up until the release of GTA 3, Hastings says most games were about killing enemies and solving puzzles. However, GTA 3 allowed players to choose what exactly they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. That led me to reimagine how exploration and open-ended gadget and weapon usage in Ratchet and Clank could allow players to find their own fun and approach the gameplay in their own creative ways. Similarly, PlayStation London studio head Tara Saunders says GTA 3 was one of the first major shifts in self-directed play in game design. <clears throat> Several prominent Capcom directors also offer their own stories. Monster Hunter World director Yuya Takuda says that GTA 3 set the standard for immersion focused game design seen in modern AAA titles. Devil May Cry 5, Devil May Cry 5 director Hideki Hid Hideki? I don't know if that's it. I've seen that spelled different ways. Itsuno recalls how he was impressed at Grand Theft Auto 3's ability to utilize PS2 capabilities at a time when his team was struggling to make a single path game. Resident Evil 7 director Koshi Nakanishi was also impressed by the game's scale, so much so that he decided to do the, ne the exact opposite. That small, narrow, and dense horror game eventually became Resident Evil 7. I remember thinking, how did they make this kind of a game on PS2? Not only from a gameplay point of view, but also from a technical point of view. In response to the subsequent development of open world games, I decided to do the exact opposite and make a small, narrow, dense horror game, and Resident Evil 7 was born. In a way, Resident Evil 7 may have been born because of GTA 3. Thank you and congratulations on the 20th anniversary of GTA 3. 
Many more notable developers from big name studios such as Deathloop's Arcane Lion, Days Gone's Ben Studios, and Control's Remedy also talked about the influence GTA 3 had on their own car careers. Grand Theft Auto 3, as well as Vice City and San Andreas, is set to release in the Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy Collection on December 7, 2021. Actually, um, earlier than that for uh, the digital versions, right? November 11th, three days from now. That's what it said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last and final story of the night. Ooh. Thank you for tuning into the Play Level Podcast this Monday night, November 11th, 2021. It is now 1049 p.m. I have work at 6.30 a.m. in the morning, so I won't be chatting long. I'm just going to say a quick, brief goodbye and see you later and thank you for tuning in and make sure you like share subscribe and comment on all my youtube videos on the dad level make sure you follow me here on twitch um tell your friends tell your friends friends bring them all here to the stream let's have some fun especially on mondays when we sit here and we talk about video games come be a part of the discussion let's have some feedback i would love to get some feedback on people um from people on these these different topics i talk about um and you know let's have let's have a good time you know, and if you so feel inclined to help a brother out and hit that subscribe button, then, well, thank you. Just like I thank Blue Dev One for hitting that subscribe button earlier. Finally got my alerts up and running. They aren't 100%. Like, that animation was the generic one, and I put one up for myself. But um, it's, it's not loading up every time, so I got to figure out what that is, why that is. So I got to figure that out. But at least it comes up when you subscribe. At least something comes up. So I'm happy about that. But you got to ask me something. What, what you got to ask me? Yes, I did. Shameful. Shameful. As I tell people, man. Be careful of the company you keep. Exactly. And the stuff you put in your, in your, like this music, man. Especially the music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand this music nowadays. Like, why is why it's the way it is? It's disgusting. It's weird. It's definitely not right. There's, there's just something totally not right with this music nowadays. And how dumb it is. And how dumbed down it is. How everything is exactly the same. And how, how they take old samples. Like, I heard that somebody used a sample of a song that was like a dope, a dope song. They sampled it, made a terrible beat out of it. And when they were rapping over it, they were rapping dumb fast and it was a slow sample. But not like, not like twist the fast. I'm talking about like mumbling fast, like not saying clear sentences, like not making sense, like being off beat fast, like messing up. But that was the record and you put it on Spotify fast. Like you really put that out and said, this is good. This is popping, son. Or what did I say? This is lit. That's the that's the state of the music in this generation, and I I think it's disgusting. It's terrible. This music, it is, it is Satan. It is the devil's music. There, yeah, it is. Yeah, in Utah. That was crazy. <clears throat> that's really ridiculous, yo. So. <clears throat> Be careful what you what you do, where you go, who you hang out with, what you listen to, what you eat, what you drink. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from gangs. Stay away from violence. Stay away from violent situations. Stay away from people who do bad things. Hang around people who are about positivity, love and stuff. Hang around gamers, man. Like just be around gamers. Gamers stay home and shoot stuff up on GTA. You know, we stay home and get headshots and um call of duties and stuff like that you know we're not out there doing stupid stuff like that it's shameful man and, and exactly and stop stop trying to please other people like if people don't like you because you know you don't you don't follow the crowd you don't listen to the music they listen to you don't talk how they talk you don't do the stuff that they do then you know they don't like you oh well 
have no friends. I'd rather have no friends than the bad, you know, than the wrong friends. I told that to my son today. I told that to ZZ boy. I said, I'd rather have no friends than the wrong friends. Because having no friends, you stay home, you stay out of trouble. You're just like, I got nowhere to go, nobody to hang out with. So let me just play the PlayStation. Which, if actually, you end up having friends and you have the right friends, you'll be home playing video games, making friends that way. And, you know, those friends aren't going to say, oh, let's go smoke drugs or let's go and um, do this. And if they do, you can easily just block them and get different friends, you know, <laughs> very easy. You know, but having the wrong friends, you're going to be put in bad situations. You know, you could be in a regular situation and it become a bad situation at any time. Because they got the bad energy with them and they bring in bad energy people towards them. They gravitate towards them. They could have beef and somebody could come and try to do something about that beef. Shoot them, stab them or whatever. And you caught up in it and something happens to you. So. <clears throat> let's do that. Video games is a way to stay out of trouble and a way to keep people together. The right people in the right way. So don't let people tell you, oh, get out and do this and do that. You get out and you do stuff, you, you got to worry about COVID. You got to worry about crime, people, you know, killing and shooting and blowing stuff up and all that stuff. I don't even want to worry about that in GTA. You know what I'm saying? That's only <laughs> I don't want to worry about that stuff. So, you know, you can have your social interactions with the right people in the right situations. You know, going to these concerts and stuff like that is like, eh. I mean, it can happen anywhere, but you're making your... <laughs> Put Kratos face on my player if I play it <laughs> Shut up. Um, but yeah, I can see it can happen anywhere. Things can happen anywhere at any time. You can be in like Walmart just shopping for eggs. And something bad happened, but you're increasing your chances of bad things happening when you go to certain places and do certain things. And you know that we're trying to decrease the chances. You got it on one of your builds. <laughs> so can you have different faces on your builds this year? Or, you know, when you upload a face, you know, it's got to be it goes across every face. Every character you create has the same face. You change the hair, you change the color on one, it changes it on all of them. It's not like that no more. You say, yeah, I'm glad it's not. It That's dope. Because then you can have different looking characters. On current gen, it's still like that. But on, I mean, on um, last gen, it's, it's, um, on current gen, they don't allow you to have different looking characters. But on, no. On past gen, they don't have don't they don't allow you to have um you know different looking characters, but on the PS5 and stuff, they allow it now. Okay, that's good. I get it. You gotta remember we're in the current gen now. So current gen is PS5 and Xbox Shmiri Schmex. So but I'm out of here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Check out all, me on all my social media platforms. You will see it on the screen next. On TikTok, I'm PabloMan44 underscore Twitch. On Instagram, I am at PabloMan44. And on Twitter, it's at PabloMan44 and at the dad level. So make sure you check me out there. YouTube is the, the dad level. So I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Hopefully I have my connector or plug or whatever, my converter. Or I think it's a splitter or something. It's something I, I found on several videos, and it, and so I got it so that I can play Silent Hill One through my um, capture card to play it live on stream. So oh yeah, I get it now. Yeah, so on Wednesday I'll be playing Silent Hill One. Hopefully, if not, I'll figure out what I'm gonna do on Wednesday. Maybe I won't play anything at all. Maybe we'll um, do something else, you know? We'll see. But I'll be here on Wednesday. So see you guys then. Y'all be safe. Make sure y'all um, stay happy by doing something that makes you happy. As long as it's the right thing, do only the right things. Yeah, maybe GTA. We'll see. All right. I'm out of here. Peace and love, y'all. One. Easy. And, oh, yeah. 
Chicago Bulls beat the Nets. Suck it, Neil.